Welcome to the show. Today's guest is a young techie who's empowering the government of Maharashtra with technology that can dramatically improve governance in the state. Vishal Agarwal founded Spatial Ideas to apply geographic information systems to governance. Starting with the state of Maharashtra, his solutions are effectively lowering corruption, lowering resource wastage, improving transparency for the public and improving management at municipal and district levels. At Spatial Ideas, we have developed this platform called Viking, which brings maps, analytics, biometrics and mobile applications together. And everything we design in a dashboard, it's always map centric. So imagine being able to see where do people live who come to certain fair price shop for food. Imagine live health maps for the country because you are now saying, where are all these people who have diarrhea or malaria? Are they clustered together? Imagine being able to create maps of all the children being vaccinated, all the mothers who have anemia, who don't have anemia being able to figure out is there a trend, is there a food habit which is creating it. So everything we do, maps play a big and a central role to it and then we crunch the data, bring around analytics like nobody else has even in private companies because there's so much data and if you look at it smartly, you can really make a huge difference in terms of cost savings, in terms of being able to reach more people and that's what all government is about. Spatial Ideas is today working with four IAS officers in Maharashtra on programs ranging from public health care to food security. Vishal talks about the role of GIS in good governance and the joy of working with honest officials in the Indian Administrative Service. Vishal, tell me, how did Spatial Ideas start? I always wanted to create my own product company. Uh, the, one of the biggest reasons was I always felt stifled in terms of executing my ideas. Sometimes it would not make a business sense for a larger corporation, or sometimes it wouldn't align with their business goals. So it was very clear to me I want to create my own company. It was also very clear to me that I wanted to work with government because the kind of space we are in, uh, government is the biggest client. Now when I moved back to India, uh, I started helping uh, a very interesting company called Terracon Ecotech, who are in the business of doing tree census. So we met them because they were needing some technical assistance and I really loved their idea. I mean, imagine in India, three and a half years back, somebody is actually using GIS and GPS to map trees. Heck, we don't even have accurate, you know, people mapping. Imagine tree mapping. So I started helping them and we came about an agreement where we would not charge them for software development. We will take that technology, develop it using our expertise. They own the IP for that and we do a revenue share. And that was the best decision of my life. Uh, because one fine day they introduced me to an IS officer saying that he's a very technical guy and we wanted to come and attend a meeting with him because he'll be asking questions about the software and we haven't done the software, you've done it, so you are the best person to answer the questions. I said, fair enough. And I go there and uh, the first surprising thing was this officer goes, it's a very beautiful software. And now uh, it's, it's a big deal. So it was very pleasant surprise to uh, see his observation. And then he made some couple of observations about the software, which were like, a complete delight because he actually value added uh, amazingly. Then he goes in a very, very condescending manner. So do you make software? I said, yes. Will you make it for me? Uh, I said, why not? So said, come see me tomorrow. So on a Friday, he tells me, come see me tomorrow and my weekend is ruined. <laughs> um, I, I live in Bombay and the, the person, the IS officer was a commissioner for Meera Bhayandar, which is a good one and a half hours drive. Okay. Uh, fair enough, so I go try to see him next day and uh, well of course he doesn't see me right away and makes me wait for two hours. And I'm like super pissed already, I'm thinking what the hell am I doing here, government is you know crap, there's no point in you know exploring this, I need to come through a contact, through network and all that. But anyways he sees me after two, two and a half hours. And in the next 15 minutes he completely uh, changes my life forever. So he, he starts talking very uh, precisely about a problem he was facing about managing various kinds of projects in Meera Bhayandar. He said there are over 300 projects. I can't personally go inspect them. I need technology to help me manage them somehow to get updates on my iPad sitting in my office. I still didn't know, uh, you know, as interesting the idea was, I still didn't know what his technical acumen was. So I go, yeah, we can, you know, let people take pictures with the camera, come, they can upload it on a website. And he goes, what is this third class idea? Don't you know mobile applications and stuff? 
I said, yeah, hell yeah, I know mobile. <laughs> so I explained a map-based interface, you know, map all your projects, give mobile applications to all your civil engineers. Everything is done in real time. He said, now you are talking. So can you make that for me? He said, absolutely. How much will you charge me? I said, pay me 20 lakhs. He said, ha ha, you're not Infosys or TCS. So I also started laughing. I'm very, very, very bad with negotiations. I said, how much can you pay me? Uh, he said five lakhs and I said done deal. Now to me at that point money was not uh, really the important thing. I, I learned two very interesting things. A, these IS officers are extremely, extremely smart people. B, they really want to bring about transparency and they have, they need tools to support them. And it's amazing to be able to work with people who want to bring about change and who want to be transparent in yes. the Indian governments, right? It, it is, it is such a high. It is such a high to imagine now that the entire city is going to use my mobile application to help a population of almost a million people to make sure that all the projects which are targeted towards helping people are completed on time, are completed honestly. So tell me about the specific solution that you developed for your, for your first customer in the, in the government. So we created a uh, very nice web interface where you could uh, see all the projects, you could see all kinds of reports uh, and data, and we created a very simple uh, mobile application for all the civil engineers. So it's a very smart thing. Suppose I'm standing here and the project is say in a different location, say in Bandra, I can't update anything because the cell phone through GPS knows where you're standing. So you can't, uh, you know, uh, can't scam it. Then similarly, the time and the picture cannot be tweaked. So it's completely uh, simple and very powerful. So the civil engineer actually has to go to the site, take the picture, put in his remarks, and the update comes directly to the commissioner. And it's recorded. So now you can see a site day one, day five, day nine. Nobody can refute it. The civil engineer go and do his job. There's and a it saves record. a ton of time. Yes, yes. And it, and it saves everybody uh, so, much, so much paperwork. So it's completely paperless. So if an RTI activist files something, you just have to press a button and you have entire information you have to give them. So everybody is happy as long as they are not corrupt. And, right. and uh, so I approached with the whole thing uh, with the thought that if the database resides with the uh, Mira Bhainder Municipal Corporation, they're going to hack it and they're going to tweak it. And, you know, and I was like, can I trust them? I, I, like, I can't trust anyone. Because I still wasn't sure. Is that... Is that because it was the government you were dealing with? Yes. And it's because as we grow, all we are told is stay away from government. Uh, like how we are, everybody tells us that if you don't have to deal with them, nothing like it. And how they scare when you start a business. Oh my God, wait till you deal with this paperwork, that paperwork, this department, that department. So you have that fear factor that everybody is dishonest. Everybody is out there to get you. So I was like very wary of everybody else. So I wanted to build in systems to ensure they can't sort of, you know, fudge the system or do something wrong with the system. And, and I couldn't have been uh, any more wrong. You know, I was, I was so off my mark and I, I, can't, I can't stress this enough, not, not just the, the highest end bureaucrat of a municipal corporation that's the commissioner, but we have been pleasantly surprised with all levels of uh, officers. Vishal Agarwal first discovered maps during his graduate studies at Pennsylvania State University. After a short work stint abroad, Vishal returned to India and set up spatial ideas. Today, this team has developed a solution that will help the state of Maharashtra save billions of dollars by preventing food theft. But their dreams don't stop with this. So one of the best parts of working with government is that the scale of the impact is unbelievable. So let me uh, tell you a small project which we are doing right now. Uh, with uh, two districts, uh, Aurangabad and Sangli, we have deployed technology for food security. So all of us understand that government of India spends around $16 billion annually for subsidized food. But so many of us still sleep hungry. Yeah. So why is that? Because Indian government plainly admits that almost 80% of it goes waste. Yeah. And so imagine the impact if you can now put in technology to ensure that people cannot siphon off food, people who actually have ration cards get food, and the fake ration cards are somehow made redundant. So that's exactly what we did. Okay. So we started uh, by providing a simple Android power tablet and attached a fingerprint scanner to it. We uploaded all the ration card data on it and we mapped everybody and using biometrics, face recognition as well as fingerprint recognition, we are now identifying who we are giving food, at what time and how much. 
Now, what it has resulted into is documentation now of that 60 to 70 percent ration cards are bogus. They never show up. So typically what happens, a shopkeeper says, I have 2,000 ration cards, so give me food for 2,000 families. Now what we have identified that 60 to 70 percent of ration cards never show, to the sh uh, show up to the shop. So they're fake. So now instead of giving them food for 2,000 people, we just have to give them food 500 for- 500 people. Exactly. So imagine the Im impact and savings. Now in a district, there are around 1,700 uh, shops or 2,000 shops usually. In a state, there are 30, 40 districts. Currently, we are discussing a pan Maharashtra adoption of this technology for 15,000 ration card shops. Imagine the impact. And if this pilot is successful, a pan Maharashtra rollout across the board. I mean, uh, we are going to save billions of dollars and help millions of families get food. Yeah. Amazing. That's Thank you. Amazing. So do you see yourself working with other states outside of Maharashtra in the future? Oh, absolutely. We are super excited about scaling our technologies to different states because the problems are the same, exactly same. The workflows are exactly same. So what we're doing in food security, what we're doing in health, what we're doing in sanitation, infrastructure applies not just in every state in India, but you won't believe the infrastructure project management which are discussed. Same problem, somebody from Trinidad and Tobago looks me up, it happened like three weeks back, and they're saying that uh, we have this problem, and it's exactly the same problem of Mira Bhayandar. So what is amazing is that not just India, but I'm quite bullish that we'll be able to take this globally. If you were to look beyond the work that you've done at Spatial Ideas, um, given your exposure with the government and administrative officers within Indian government, what do you think is the scope for technology to dramatically change the way we run this nation? I feel uh, technology is the only way you can have uh, a change of that magnitude or scale. Technology brings about uh, what I uh, say as digital documentation. So digital documentation is basically taking any process and making it completely digital so that A, you can query and find out what happened. B, it's quick. C, it saves tons of paper and time. The, we are all about transparency and accountability in governance. And uh, technology is the, the way to go forward to implement and ensure efficiency, accountability, and transparency. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you and for all the best me. to spatial ideas. Thanks. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed that conversation, here's more.